good morning. morning. We welcome you to worship. We are glad that you are here today. The farmers are arriving, so the the market will start at 9.30. So if you haven't bought a ticket for the brunch, you can still do that. You can just pay for a ticket at the door. Uh, But you can do the market with or without the brunch. Uh, But the egg bake, the oatmeal, the uh, salad greens all are um, organic and came from some of the vendors today. And so we invite you to stay for a time of food. And if you don't want to eat here, you can take your food with you. Um, But a lot of really good things for us um, and just great support for farmers in our community. Um, The other thing to share with you, Young at Heart meets this week. And so that's on Wednesday. Lutheran Disaster Response um, is in in Ukraine. They're actually in, in Poland on the border. But we also are partnering with several of our Lutheran churches uh, in Estonia, Poland. There's a couple others I don't remember. Um, Today is the last day for a match, a $100,000 match that a church in Texas has put forward. So if you would like to give a gift towards Lutheran disaster response to help in Ukraine, you can write a separate check and just put Ukraine in the memo line. And then we will actually make that match today um, so that those funds um, are doubled on their impact. And so we invite you to consider that as well. Um, If you uh, attended the new member class or you would like to talk with Pastor Tony or myself, you can do that after worship today. Crash meets tonight at 6.30 and council meets this week. And uh, (laughs) today is not the day to do this, but... Uh, Next Sunday, when the kitchen is far quieter, you should go in and take a look. The kitchen is entirely cleaned out. The demolition on East Hall and the kitchen starts, East Hall starts tomorrow, and then the kitchen will be demolished next Monday. You won't be able to get in there because it'll be asbestos abatement as well. And so um, all the contractors called us and said, hey, we have time right now. And we said, in the middle of Lent? And they said, Lent, what is that? And... (laughs) We said, sure, let's make it work. And so um, phase one of this second remodel is to remove all of the old wood framing and the speaker mesh black, the old stained glass that's blocked on the outside of the building in East Hall. All of that is being removed and drywalled in. And then the asbestos abatement is East and West Hall, the coat rooms, the kitchen. Uh, And then when when that is all done, then we move into painting and all of the new flooring installed. Um, So we are tentatively praying that Easter Sunday it will all be beautiful. Uh, There won't be a kitchen until mid-May, but uh, that's that's neither here nor there for us. So uh, lots of excitement. It's great. The rental closes on Thursday this week, and so those proceeds, I don't remember the exact percentage at the annual meeting. I think it was like 80 or 85 percent of the proceeds will go to help with the remodel. And then some of it goes into our rainy day dedicated maintenance fund as well. So it is super exciting. Soup suppers will be in the narthex for the next four weeks. Spanish worship is moving to the hearth room. Uh, The key word in Lent is be flexible. So that is our new word for the day. I invite you to rise. We join in the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in our opening hymn. No, we don't. We sing the Lamb of God. Thank you, Vicki. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. God of covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all people into your arms and shelter us with your mercy that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Children time. Yes, I am ready for some children. And if you guys brought your uh, donation cups with you, bring those up with you. Okay? Bring those up. Yep. Go ahead and bring them up. And you can set those off to the side a little bit, a couple of you, because I need some volunteers. We have one last noisy offering that we're going to do today. Okay? How about you guys both go that way? Would you guys both go that way? And would you guys both go that way? So go down the middle. Yep, get your change out, everybody. Here we go. You guys go down that. Actually, go towards the choir. That's a good way to go. Oh, yeah. And I would say if we have any of our farmers here today, we'd invite you to come in. Any of our volunteers doing the Winter Farmer's Market, you guys should come up front. Come on in. Don't look hesitant. We'll have some of you come and sit in the front row. Sure. Come on up. You guys can sit in the front row or at the kneelers, anywhere around the, the students. Come on in. Come on in. I was not going to make you sit on the floor. It would be hard enough for some of us to get up after sitting on the floor. Okay. Oh, did you get... Oh, you're not done. Oh, Jonathan, you're making a second trip, huh? I think somebody may have gotten them already, Jonathan. So we can put these. Let's put these in here, okay? Ooh, that's good. If there are hands up, yeah, you keep going out there. Okay, come on back, guys. Come on, then you can set the buckets down somewhere around here. Okay. Thank you. And you guys, I love it. You have your buckets? Well, you guys get to keep those buckets, the ones you brought, but we're going to ask you to take whatever money you brought with you, and would you dump it inside of here? Okay? Dump it in there. Go ahead, dump it inside. Yep. Oh, look at that. So much great money you guys have. I love that. Yeah, I love it, I love it, I love it. Yeah, could we have bags. I expect to collect a lot of money. That's why I brought a bag. So now I can go shopping at the farmer's market, right? Uh-huh, you guys are like, I'm not sure. Okay, some more. Here we go. No, you can't take out, silly. I have to dump it in, Leo. Wait, 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 here. Here, inside. I know you and I were thinking the same way. We need money for the farmer's market. Okay, why don't you guys take a seat? We're going to chat a little bit. So do you guys see these buckets and all this money you collected? And look at, look at, there are some special people who are in the front row over here. Take a look over there, okay, and standing up here. And anybody else who's helping with the farmer's market, maybe you stand up if you're not. Maybe you all came up. I heard you weren't all, but you all did come up. Okay, so all of these people are helping with something we're going to do today called the Winter Farmer's Market. And we have some farmers with us today. I saw the, I saw the farmers. Here you today. did see the farmers. Are there any farmers in here with us right now? Would you raise your hand? Look at, do you see there are some farmers here? 
And it's really special that they're here today because I think you might have brought some things with you that you're going to have at the farmer's market, right? Can I see some of them for a minute? So, so we have some bread. Oh, and we have a hat. Look at these great things. Some really... Ooh, smell it. It smells so good. And look at these hats. Oh, that would be a really cute picture, right? So they brought some things. Let's see, what else did they bring? Ooh, we're just going to leave with the bacon right now and a steak. This is great. I think we have a grill out back. We could make some really great food. So they brought all these wonderful things with them. What a gift they are to us, hey? So what do farmers do? Do you know what farmers do? What do they do? They make food for us. What else? They can keep us healthy with that food. Sometimes they make different things, not just food, right? We saw hats and scarves and other things that they might, they might make. So they do, they grow things. And we have lots of volunteers. See, they all have this great shirt on that says, live generously. What does generously mean? What does generous mean? Do you know? Do you have any idea what generous means? Well, if you have something, it means you share it with other people. Look at this. Look at all this money, all the people in the church shared with us today. That's pretty special, isn't it? They've been very generous. And all of you collected in your cups, and that's really generous too. So do you know why we collected this money? Does anybody remember why? To help the farmers. Yes, to help the farmers. So I'm going to ask farmers, have you ever had any of your equipment break before? They're all like, uh-huh, we have. Have you ever have like prices of seeds or other things that you need to be a farmer? Has that ever gotten really high and it's hard to afford that stuff? Yeah. And is it sometimes hard to maybe pay your workers to help you? Sometimes, right? So we collected all this money in the last couple of weeks. We've done noisy offerings. You've done your collection cups. And we've collected lots and lots of money. And we are going to donate that to the farmers. It's going to go to a special fund. Now, I'm probably going to get, is it Harvest for Hope or Hope for Harvest? harvest for hope. Okay, Harvest of Hope Fund. And this helps the farmers. Maybe when one of their machines breaks, they can get some money to help them fix the machine. Or when seeds are really expensive or other things are really hard, so we can help them. And that's a really great and generous thing that we get to do. And isn't that really special? It's really special that the farmers share those great things with us, those foods and different things to keep us healthy and make us happy, right? So we want to say thank you by sharing all of this with them, okay? That's pretty special, hey? So what a gift from God the farmers are to us. So we're going to pray for them, and then later on today we're going to take one more collection at the next service, and then we're going to give all of this money to those farmers. That's pretty amazing, huh? So when you guys get a chance between services, go to the brunch or go shop for some of the neat things that they brought and help support them and be generous to them, okay? I don't know. It's a lot of money. It's a lot. It's, you want to count all of it? No, yeah, somebody does. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, take your hands and put them together and let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for the gift of farmers and for farms and all the volunteers who are helping today with the winter farmer's market. We just ask, Lord God, that you would give the farmers strength, that you would give them rest, that you would give them all they need to keep working hard to bring us all these great things and help us to be generous with our hearts and our money and our time to be able to support them so that they can keep bringing us all these wonderful things that they bring us. Keep everybody safe, Lord God, and remind us always that we are loved by you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys can see uh, Acolytes for Children's Bulletins, and then head back to your seats. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. 
Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says. Seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witness has risen up again, has risen against me and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I invite you to be seated. <clears throat> if I asked you to draw a picture of Jesus, what would the image look like? Would it be a blonde-haired, blue-eyed shepherd holding a staff? What about a lion? Perhaps a loaf of bread and a cup of wine. Or maybe a door, a gate, a light, or a bridegroom. But what about a mother hen? Would it ever have occurred to you to draw this seemingly insignificant, vulnerable, and defenseless little animal? Me neither. They aren't the most elegant of creatures. They can't fly to save their lives, and they make the most ridiculous noises. They can be fierce when they want to be, but there's something pathetic about how defenseless and vulnerable they are. And it's this image that I reflect on when I hear the words of Jesus in today's Gospel from Luke. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. 
but you were not willing. Can you picture what Jesus is describing? Our God as a mother hen and much less one whose chicks reject her. Here's what I find so surprising about this image. If power, wisdom, or success were the characteristics Jesus wanted to emphasize in his choice of metaphor, he could have used any number of images to make his point. Instead, on this second Sunday in Lent, Luke invites us to contemplate Jesus as a mother hen, standing with her wings wide open, offering welcome, belonging, and protection while her children refuse to come home to her. In the verses that precede this description, a group of Pharisees warn Jesus to leave the area where he's teaching and healing because Herod wants to kill him. Jesus fully knows that Herod's irritation is nothing to mess with. After all, he is the one who ordered the arrest and beheading of John the Baptist. He nevertheless tells the Pharisees that He's not afraid of that fox. I have work left to do, he tells them, and I won't be deterred by the threats of a bully. At this point in the story, Jesus has set his course for Jerusalem, the city that rejects God's messengers and kills its prophets. Jesus knows exactly what fate awaits him there, but he won't change course. Not for Herod, not for anyone. Because although he knows the difficult and painful journey that lies ahead, he has the ultimate confidence and trust in God's promise that something far greater awaits. The life that God offers us is always coming to us in unknown, unexpected, and unplanned for ways. It's the promise that life is constantly breaking in on us in both big and small ways. And when it does, we can't explain how or why it happened, but we know that it did. And we know that it was real. In those moments, we were open to the promise of life to come. That openness to life is the call of Jesus in each of our lives and what this gospel is all about. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. It's why he set his face to go to Jerusalem. It's why there are so many stories of Jesus healing the blind and the deaf. He's opening eyes and ears to the promise, to the future, to the coming of life, but not just any ordinary life, abundant life. It's why so many times he tells us to stay awake, to be watchful, and not to fall asleep. He's telling us to keep open to our future, to our coming life. And that's what Jerusalem in today's gospel has failed to do. Jerusalem has killed the prophets, the ones who were calling it into a future. It stoned those God sent to bring it life. Jerusalem here is a metaphor for the ways in which we are blind and deaf to the promise, the ways in which we do not keep open to our future. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing, Jesus says of Jerusalem. And you were not willing. Jerusalem has closed itself to its future. Jerusalem has closed itself to the promise and the insistence of life. And sometimes you and I are Jerusalem. Sometimes we're blind and deaf to the promise, closed off to the abundant and life-giving future that awaits us. It happens when life is on autopilot and we're just going through the motions. It happens when we hold grudges and resentments, when we withhold forgiveness or refuse to accept the forgiveness of another. It's in our suspicions, cynicism, and rejection of others. It's in all the things we declare as ultimate, and in the ultimatums we issue. It's what's going on when we put up our defenses, draw lines in the sand, deny hospitality, and refuse to welcome others, especially those who are different from us. 
It happens when, we f when fear overwhelms us and power, security, and control become our primary values. It's what lies behind our illusions of self-sufficiency, our refusal to listen to another, and our belief that there is only one way, our way. It happens when structures, rules, and law become ends rather than means. It's what happens when we cling to and become defined by past guilts, hurts, or losses. It's what's going on when we refuse to be self-reflective, question ourselves, or consider something new. It's what happens when routines, habits, and the same old patterns rule our lives. It's our inability or refusal to imagine to dream the impossible, to wonder what if or say, perhaps. It's what happens when we're too afraid to trust. When this happens, we settle for simple life rather than the abundant life that Jesus promises. We stagnate. Everything deteriorates. We're no longer growing and maturing. Despair replaces hope and nightmares replace dreams. We can no longer see or hear the promise of new life. We close ourselves to our future, and where there is no hope for the future, there is no life. Jesus is not accusing Jerusalem. He is grieving Jerusalem. When he finally sees Jerusalem, Luke tells us he wept over it. He is sorrowing and protesting the end, the death, the narrowness, and the short-sightedness of Jerusalem. And yet he continues coming to Jerusalem. He is always coming to the Jerusalems of our lives, always calling us to life, to abundant life, to new life. And this promise never goes away, even when we don't respond. The gift of life is always coming to us in countless different ways, every moment of every day. The promise remains. Life never gives up on us. Life will be waiting for us when we're ready and willing to be blessed. So in what ways are your eyes, ears, or heart closed today? What needs to happen to change, to be let go of for them to begin opening? What would it take for you to be open to and welcome an unknown promise, an unforeseeable future, an uncertain life. I know it's asking a lot to risk this kind of vulnerability to such a blessing. That's not the way we usually live. But that's exactly the point. This is our only chance for life, abundant life, a new life, and that's a risk I want to take. Don't you? Jesus mocks Herod by calling him a fox, but he never argues that the fox isn't dangerous. He never promises his children immunity from harm. What Jesus offers is not the absence of danger, but the fullness of his unguarded, open-hearted, and completely vulnerable self in the face of all that threatens and scares us. What he gives is his own body, his own life. What he promises is a place of refuge and return for all his children, even the ones who choose to turn away from him and what he offers. And it's this turning away that fuels Jesus' deep grieving. You don't have to be a parent to mourn missed opportunities, broken promises, or crushed hopes. All of us, regardless of our circumstances, know what it's like to feel rejected. We know what it looks like to fail in our best efforts to protect, help, advise, or save. We know the grief we experience when we watch someone we care about self-destruct before our eyes. All of us carry painful memories of unreturned love, unmet desires, and unfulfilled dreams. We know what it's like to long for something and find no satisfaction for that longing. Jesus longs and grieves for his lost and wandering children, for the little ones who will not come home, for the city that will not welcome its Savior, 
for the endangered masses who refuse to recognize the peril that awaits them. How often have I desired to gather you? It's a lament for all that could have been in this chaotic and clueless world, for the lasting wounds and the hopes that come to nothing. Sometimes, like Jesus, the mother hen, we can't do what we most desire to do. We can't give what we deeply long to give. We can't save the loved ones we ache to save. You were not willing, Jesus tells his wandering children. You would not come back. You would not relinquish your right to yourself, not even when your life depended on it. What do you yearn for that escapes you? What missed chances, failed efforts, or broken dreams tug at your heart and call you into mourning? How might we grieve with Jesus over our homes, our cities, our countries, our planet? How might we stand with him in the Jerusalems of our lives and weep our sorrow into new hope? My friends, I've got to be honest. Trusting a God who's like a vulnerable mother hen feels like one of the riskiest things I can imagine doing. I'd prefer the lion. And yet, a yearning mother hen is precisely the God we belong to. The one weeping for us. The one calling us home. The one whose wings are wide open, whose protection is sufficient, whose hospitality is limitless, whose body and heart are on the line, and whose desire is fixed on us, all of us. How often have I desired to gather you? During this wilderness season of repentance and transformation, I pray that the longing of Jesus may become our longing too. And may the way of the mother hen, the way of vulnerability, sorrow, hope, and eternal welcome lead us back to the one who will never, ever stop calling us home. Thanks be to God. Amen.
invite you to rise as we gather our hearts to God in a moment of prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Holy God, you are our light and our salvation. You promise to hear us when we pray. We are grateful for your care and your love that sustains us in the wilderness moments of our lives. You promise to lead us home. Remind us that even when we wander away from you, that you follow after us to guide us back to your light. Bless us on this journey, Lord God, until you call us home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless this world you have made, Lord God. Tend the beauty of creation through our care. Inspire all of us to honor the water, land, and life as holy gifts from your hand. We give you thanks for all who honor the land, especially those who bring life from the soil, for farmers, gardeners, and all who care for others through the gift of what you have created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. God of peace, we continue to ask you to move among the people of Ukraine to remind them that you are with them, for those who seek shelter, for those who grieve the death of loved ones, for those who are afraid. Let your peace reign over all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy God, hear our praise this day for all who hunger for your healing touch, especially Shirley, Arlene, and Rose. Bring your peace to all who long for a moment of deep and renewing rest. Surround Darla, Becky, and King at the death of Bart. Let your Holy Spirit reveal the joys of your resurrection power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, hear our prayers for our sisters and brothers in Usulatan and San Jorge, El Salvador, for Pastor Blanca at El Milagro de Dios, Pastor Julio at El Buen Pastor, and Bishop Gomez in the Salvadoran Lutheran Church, for Pastor Nathan and Bishop Katoy in Usa River, Tanzania, and the Meru Diocese of Tanzania, for the people of Cross Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Pastor Michelle, Bishop Erickson, that you would bless them in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hand we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated. We continue with the offering.
I invite you to rise as you are able, please. You? Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and As Pastor Tony was preaching today about the mother hen, I leaned over to Max, who lives on a farm, and I said, do you think Pastor Tony's ever been chased by a chicken before? And Max said, I don't know if he has. But in another commentary on the gift of the mother hen, they said it's a very traumatic experience for chicks to be nestled under the wings of that mother hen. In fact, the chicks can become so traumatized that they get disoriented. And I do wonder sometimes if the people of God need that same disorientation and trauma from God to move them to a place of following in God's footsteps. And then I am very grateful that this is how God welcomes his home, in the gift of bread and wine. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The table is set, and you are invited. Please be seated. 
Jonathan, George, if you want to help, come on up. Communion this morning is by the gift of bread and also gluten-free wafers at two stations in front, along with individual glasses of red wine or white grape juice. If you desire to not receive communion in the sanctuary with so many people, then we invite you to meet us at the station out in the lobby, and there you will also have bread, gluten-free, red, red wine, and white grape juice. If you're in the side aisles, we invite you to simply join us, move through the center sections to the center aisle to receive. Come, for all is ready. Can you do Vicky? The body of Christ.
invite you to rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor. Pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This past Wednesday night, uh, we had uh, 80 for worship and 70 for soup. And so that was wonderful to see. It's been three years since we've done either of those things in the midweek. There is a sign up out there for this coming Sunday and we'd, uh, Wednesday. And if you are interested in providing soup, I would love that. Otherwise, I may just call you and ask you to do that on Monday. So feel free to sign up. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you are not staying for brunch over by the coffee cabinet, there is coffee this morning. In, uh, let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.